Okay, yeah, someone someone said something. Sorry. I can facilitate what the next meeting. Okay, that's um Omar, right? Omar. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Thank you very much, Omar. Um okay, and thank you. Can play everyone. supporting role with Omar. Okay, so I'll put Omar and Kinsley then. Thank you, I'll Kinsley. Support Omar. <laughs> Okay. okay okay thank you everyone for joining and would we'll keep conversing in the other meets in the slack group bye everyone bye bye lami thank you bye. bye everyone I think we're done. Um, the next meeting should be done. We're starting about that. Good morning, Elizabeth. David Nod. I don't think Matt G is going to be here. Um, he had to, I don't know if you saw his message. He has to take his son to the airport or something. So um, uh, I haven't seen the message. Yeah. And okay. I, I'm assuming Sean and uh, Jacob are also not coming. So. Right. Because they're at that conference. Yep. Yep. So I don't know about the others. So we have pretty light quorum today. <laughs> Yeah, so right. I think I'm going to be available for the for the second time. Mm -hmm. I will fill in for all those that were supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, this reminds me of sometimes when we have the community calls on Tuesday when I'm with Ruth, and then we find ourselves only two of us in the room, and instead of um, focusing on maybe what the call is about. We just go into very many other topics that are really not related to the call. And yeah, that's how the hour goes. And we're like, okay, we spent our time and no one showed up. <laughs> that's what Armstrong and I did at Evolution on Tuesday. We just chatted yeah. for like a half an hour. <laughs> you know, okay. when when I realized like, oh, I've, I'm late and uh, I tried to join. I looked at the minutes of the meeting and nobody was there. I didn't bother to join the Zoom. <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah, it was all good. <laughs> uh, I really only thought it happens for the community calls since it's like um, a general thing where like nobody is um, responsible or tagged to something. But then looks like... Um, even for these other calls, it happens. And I think Elizabeth has a test of that since she happens to be in almost all the other calls. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, interesting. So maybe we should add ourselves in the meeting minutes and <laughs> somebody joins. Uh, otherwise, we can take our time and do our work. So our, let's see. I, I guess you're the facilitator. Yep. Oh, then if you facilitate and you're here, unless the minutes we have, oh, look at the agenda. So I have Very copied huge. from previous uh, meetings agenda. It has a lot of things, so it just needs to be. I don't think Tony uh -huh. is here, so. Yeah. Yeah, some of this we probably should wait for mm. interested parties to be involved in the meeting, um, like Tony, for instance, and others. Yeah. Yeah. I've kept this uh, help.md because uh, it was Tony's idea. So maybe we need to get his feedback if he joins. Okay. Yeah, and I think that that topic is still really ambiguous and fuzzy for me as well so i would really like um so enix just as a little context there was an idea brought up as um, part of one of the metrics that we were working on to 
have projects fill out um, what we were just calling help.md, which would be like a list of or areas where um, a project could use help. So if someone wanted to join the, co the community, they could easily see, you know, all in one document where else, where the project could use help. But there's like a lot of okay. considerations around that. And um, it started because um, a gentleman named Tony had joined who was um, wanting to know as a company where they could provide value to a project, which is the tie into the value working group here. That's how it started. Um, so he was like, oh, it would be great if all this was in just a document instead of, you know, just random issues that were open, you know, so that they could say, oh, yeah, this project has identified that they need help with documentation. That's something my company can provide. And so it's like a more high level kind of um, way to show that information. But I mean, there's a lot of like considerations, like, and I'm not really sure how that ties back to an actual metric or I'm not really sure. So, yeah. yeah. I think also um, maybe if you was here, I would have context, but then I'm um, that now, you know, one thing that you fear building um, is um, trying to duplicate a process or trying to duplicate a standard that is already known to the larger community because then um, when someone comes to your, to your kind of um, setting or environment, the standards they expect like our international standards, I should say in quotes, so putting a help.md yet, um, if I'm contributing, unless the project is really maybe not on GitHub, uh, um, but of course I expect to find information in like um, contributing contributing.md or, or maybe if I'm looking to contribute directly, I go to the issues and check on um, the issues that are explained. So unless there is really specific information that um, needs attention, I, I, I look at it as duplicating the wheel because already there are standards of where, what to check, where to check in case you need um, to contribute to a project. So I think that that, 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 that would depend on what um, project and where it is, but already like um, there are already some industrial standards for where to find what you need to contribute to depending on where it's, where you found it. Hmm. Uh, interesting. So, but if if it already if it had already taken the direction of a metric, then I think um there was more information that I missed out to make such a conclusion. Uh, I don't think it has taken as a form of metric. It was more like an idea to have some place on the repos on the GitHub or place. Mm -hmm. uh, is that correct, Elizabeth? Because yeah, I was I not in that meeting. Yeah, it didn't get anywhere near um, a metric uh, development mm -hmm. level at all. Like we don't have a template for it or anything. I mean, we had just kind of been chatting about the idea and how that would fit in. Um, it, it came up also as part of a um, discussion about a metrics model called business readiness, I think was the original. Um, and that was the issue that you had opened, Vinod, way back when, and you remember this metrics model, yeah. right? And so we've talked about it in a few different places. So that was kind of, um, like I don't I don't really know if if Tony was thinking maybe we we would just check for that file as part of a metric I'm not entirely sure how it links back to metric development to be perfectly honest I'm not sure yeah you know if, when if I... submission is okay yeah go ahead no I was uh, I was saying that if he, if his submission was in a way of um, getting um a one central place where someone could come and know that, okay, you can um, actually contribute to this or you can actually um, help with this. Then um, my question would be, what's the use of a readme? What's the use of a contribution? What's the use of the issue section on every repository? And um, what's the use of uh, maybe having a documentation of that project? Because at least on an industrial standard, um, those are the four places anybody who would be contributing to an open source project would first inter inter invest with before they are like, okay, I don't see how this is makes making sense to me, so I need to check somewhere else. Um, yeah, I agree with you, but like uh, the idea was to have a especially focused highlighting area where we, uh, where a project tells what help they need, they are looking for. 
and like a read me is generally about okay what our project is about and like uh, yeah good first issue is the place that tells okay uh we are looking for help in this area but like specifically if project is looking for financial help or some other help they can highlight those ideas i think the idea is good but i don't know how it aligns in with other documents i'm not sure that needs to be discussed or sorted out but i really like this idea of like okay as a project we need help in these areas these needs to be highlighted so okay um, i think maybe we'll, it will be good if we get context um, from whoever came yep. up with that idea yep. so that um we could hear his originality into what all this because now also when you talk about things concerning um, help i'm also not even starting to think um github already has um um like a button that has um a donation um link if you want to support yep. your project or you want i mean like for every help that I see you're talking of, there is already a industrial standard depending on where it is. So I think we'll get context into um, what the original idea was. Yep. yep. There was also confusion around naming it help.md because it like some people yeah. that had joined this conversation were like, well, I that to me says that's where I as a user go to get help with my pro with this project like on the, you know on the flip side so it, there's there's a lot to sort out if we are going to do anything with this which i don't know that we will but um yeah there was a lot of a lot of uh gray area to, to define i think we can push it to or try to 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 to, to have a chat in slack if um, the originator of this idea can be reachable so that um we know how to chat about it and see whether actually we are duplicating anything or actually maybe there is something that we need to put somewhere that we're missing or it's, it's really something that needs to start on its own. So what should be the plan? Uh, do you want to work on the model or should we call it a day? I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm good either way. I uh, I would not complain if we got that time back. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would not complain about because, that. Because yeah, there are a few things that I need a broader input than just two of us. Because on the one, I like mm -hmm. two areas I've personally worked, but I need the input from a broader perspective. That's where I was thinking of that. Yeah. 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 Sure. So maybe then we call it a day and continue it in a next value meeting. And by that but time, so we'll get more clarity on that. And items here. Yes, some am yeah. items here. I see that I'm trying to visit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one is like a metric model, a business readiness metric model, which I have worked on it, but I need a broader consensus on that, which is this one. I think it doesn't hurt to call it um, uh, an evening to me and also morning to you. Yeah. Okay, then. All right. Yeah, okay um, then. See you. Around, see you. Um, um, uh, does the Chaos Corn have a um, have, um, oh, uh, virtual joined? Uh, hi, Meko. As... Meko, we're about to close this meeting up, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's lit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like people were not here, the original quorum is not here, and we were like, should we continue? Should we close it? Since you are, you have joined, so what are your thoughts? I think he's still looking for the unmute or. I don't know. Did, did you get that? To me? Yep. Yeah, there was. Uh...
um, but, but we're, we're closing the meeting on the course. Oh, you're closing the meeting now? Okay. All right. Well, sorry I'm late. I thought I wasn't going to be able to come at all, but... Uh, no, no you're, not late. you're not late. You're yeah, not late. You're not late. We, uh, since the, like, uh, regular people were not here uh, and we have a few things on the agenda, we were not sure whether to continue or not. So well, if there's anything about... you want to talk about, I'm happy to talk about it, but uh, I don't I don't need to do it. I'm traveling, but I just realized, uh, so I was a little confused about the time zone, but I was like, oh, wow, actually, I can make this. So uh, <laughs> since you have come, then I can get your feedback. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Yeah, that then that's good. Uh, let's. Uh, so I have two things on the agenda that I wanted a feedback. So maybe we can okay. get your yeah. One is metric model. Uh, let me share the link for you. Do you have meeting minutes? Uh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Here are the meeting minutes and there is the okay. So here is the first one business readiness rating model that uh oh, yeah. If you do, you want me to share the screen? I can click on the link. That's okay. Yeah. I only have. I only. I, I'm since I'm traveling. I only have one screen anyway. So um, okay. Kind of got to choose what to look at. Um, so uh, let me anyhow share this. So here is the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So one uh, thought I had like uh, before diving deep into this, this ma uh, model seems to be a mega model, which <laughs> even we discussed in the last meeting, like we want to assess whether an open source project is ready for being adopted or in a continuity. So, and and the, especially the metrics I, I see is that fits in this model are so many that I, I'm thinking, should we continue with it or yeah. that is like my key question. So so for looking at the metric that we want to adopt, we look at the documentation, we look at the code quality, we look at the licensing, risk assessment, governance. If I include all these metrics, this is going to be a mega. Yeah. Oh. You know, this might also be a question for the metrics models group to see okay. um, what their take is as well, because okay. they might have some ideas. Yeah, because like I have reworked on this entire metric, but when I was reviewing it, I feel like, okay, this fits because I want to see whether the documentation is there because I'm adopting this um, project for my organization. Mm -hmm. if, will I be able to see the documentation, the help I need from the documentation? So then code quality, I want to assess the quality. I want to assess the licensing, whether it will conflict with my internal licensing policies or things like these. And I want to assess the riskiness of that project, whether it will survive, continue. Similarly, I want to see the governance. So all these metrics, and if I include all this metrics, this becomes like a too big of a model. Yeah. So that was my key concern on this particular uh, metric model. Yeah. Yeah, I think if, if we were to follow the pattern of previous metrics models, we've been trying to keep them to maybe like four so it you yeah. would four or five maybe so you could have like one metric per section so like one documentation one code quality one license but but that's not it's not really complete because like which yes. one do you pick? Yes. Uh, yeah. Even... I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not convinced. I mean, I don't I like, I'm not, I'm not a, so I have a couple of like initial sort of like reactions. One is that like, I didn't actually understand what, like, I didn't understand what readiness meant. 
Um, uh, and I think part of that is part of that is just I don't know I, I, I don't know hang enough I don't hang enough I don't know with people that are talking and thinking in this way. Um, but I think that the, that um, but I think also readiness is like it's a little like conceptually like a little like conceptually overloaded in the sense like ready for what right like ready to be yeah. adopted as a dependency ready to be sort of like uh used as a relatively like sort of like interchangeable part of a thing right and i i think that in some sense this actually points to a like like a like a uh like a, a conceptual like ambiguity that's related to the fact that this is super big is that actually like there's a range of things that one could be ready for and the kinds of and that a lot of details will matter a lot so i'm just not convinced that like so for example like license policy right like um, let's see. So you have license coverage, license declaration. I guess those are generally speaking, those are generally speaking things that you're gonna want. But like a lot of decisions about sort of like like the specific license is going to make it more or less like appropriate to be adopted in particular business context, depending on the existing sort of like you know like ways in which they're exist, you know, like sort of commercializing uh, like the the product, right? Like some licenses would be great, some licenses would not be great. And it's just not like, yeah, I mean, I think that like, you do want to avoid something which is like a, like, like, I, I, like I'm a little afraid that business readiness, like, is kind of just like standing in for like, kind of like, goodness. Um, okay. uh, and I don't think that that I mean, I, I, I'm just skeptical that that can work. <laughs> it's just, it's just too much. Like, wouldn't, wouldn't, would you be better off with like four like metrics models, each of which tell you something about the individual things and allow you to sort of like, like imagine like, like I'd prefer like I my senses is, is that I'd almost like prefer the I don't know like the spider plot or something or like a range of different things so that I can make my decision yeah. based on the particular context. Um, right. It's pretty. It is. It's. 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 It's pretty big. So I think that if 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 the decision is to keep moving forward with it, I'd want to be I want to see a little more specificity in terms of like what ready for what, um, mm. uh, because I think that the kinds of things that I would expect or the ways in which I would evaluate a particular piece of software will be different if I'm going to be depending on it, if I'm going to be like uh, contributing to it. Uh, or adopting it as a sort of core part of my business in a way that would then mean that we're like sort of participants within the project. And I would care about a range of other kinds of things in that context. If it's just a dependency, I probably don't care about questions like sort of uh, governance, right? Like metrics that would be oh. connected to, to governance. But if I'm uh, uh, but if I'm going to be participating in it, then I might matter about that might matter a lot, right? If this is just like yes. controlled by a single organization, right? Like um, these sorts of things. So so, I was also so a little I, confused. Yeah. The point. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was no, also no, a little no, confused ahead. with the point of view from this metric. So, is it from an open source maintainer's point of view, where here is the here are the things that I need to do in order to launch my software and have it ready for the world and ready for organizations to use it, or is it for an organization to to try to like take external metrics and have insight into things that they may not know about? Like they may not know about um, documentation, uh, you know, accessibility because it's like required um, or to get that metric, it's the project has to, you know, do a survey or whatever, if, if I'm making sense. Yeah, so like, I think good, that is point. something that needs to be cleared up. Yeah. I, I think that is very much clearly written in this, even the story, it's from organization perspective that as an organization, I'm looking at an open source project and I want to assess whether I should adopt this project or use it in my business context or not. And what are the metrics that will help me to make this decision? But that's the thing, like some of these metrics, like I, I as an external person might not have access to because it's something that they've done you know, documentation usability, that metric is all based on the project doing a survey of its users. Mm -hmm. So how am I supposed to have insight into that if that's just something the project decided to do from there? You know what I'm saying? Like they would keep that maybe internally or maybe not have posted mm -hmm. those results. So is that okay that I won't have access to any of this data or is it, am I only so gonna I, be able to look at things that are public? 
I have added usability in terms of like whether the documentation is usable. Like, is it uh, is it like truly clear? Can I use those documentation or it's just a crap? Mm -hmm. I thought uh, I have added that metric in from that perspective. As an organization, I want to see whether the documents are clearly communicating or usable or it's just in the heads of a developer and they've put in something which I'm unable to follow along. Yeah. So that would be just something subjective that the organization would make that call on whether yeah. or not they think it's usable, not what yeah, the yeah. project thinks is usable. Okay. Yes, yes. This is from organization perspective. Even the stories I have is from OSPO manager or individual programmer uh, from an organization. Yeah. I just okay. wonder, is there any, like, is there any... Like, what are the metrics that would not go in this? Like, what are the, like, what are the other, if this is like, like the, what are the desirable features of a project that would not be included in this metric model? I mean, I guess that's another way of asking the question, right? Because if the answer is, yeah, well, no, true. basically everything that's desirable we would want to have in this, then I think that you're kind of, you're kind of, you're kind of right to know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, addressing to that uh, question, what I did, how I picked the metric, I went through the entire list. Okay, is clones important for me as an organization? I was not sure, so I didn't pick it. Okay. Programming language, yes, I missed it out. It is important for me as an organization. Uh, so this is how I picked. I, I went through all these metrics. Okay, which one are these important for me to decide mm. to adopt an open source project? Mm. This is how I picked those metrics. And in that way, I felt it. This is where that thought come. It's too big of a metric model for me to yeah. use it. Uh, one other point of note, um, Kevin and I did some research around um, why people join and leave open source communities. And um, one of the questions that we asked was, what, um, what characteristics do you look for when, um, when joining or using um, a project? And so okay. I can dig those up because there were a few things that did uh, surface from that that were pretty common. So that might help us narrow this yeah. down a little bit, if that would be helpful. That will be very helpful. This is basically a question as an organization, if I want to adopt an open source project, what criteria should I have to evaluate an open source project to adopt it? Yeah, That's what yeah I, I, do, uh, I, I do remember license was a huge thing. That's where I have kept this entire uh, license, license coverage, license declared. Mm. These are the metrics which are developed under the license section. So I've copied all the uh, mm. metrics relevant to the license because I feel knowing the licensing is important for me as an organization to adopt any of the metrics. Yeah, I mean, I think that like to the extent that like, I mean, I think that we should be a little, I mean, I guess that like, I would at the very least want to be a little bit more specific about what constitutes like adoption, like, like okay. what does it mean to adopt a project and how does different kinds of adoption might like lead you to weigh these different qualities, like sort of differently. That said, like, you know, having a, like a table of contents to like a, a set of like, here's a list of, if, if you've included half of the metrics, um uh in this in this model and this is essentially just like a sort of a selected table of contents onto the existing list of metrics that say these yeah. are the kinds of things that you might want to pay particular attention to when deciding to adopt a project where adoption means one of these three things i think that that sounds potentially useful so yep okay so anyway i've changed i've i've, I've kind of changed my mind from like slightly like what is this for to like well i could see how this could be useful so, but I do think yeah. that like, yeah, we might want to think about some more questions about like, you might want to think about some more questions about governance and leadership participation by maybe there are metrics. I don't know if there are metrics about this already, but I think that like so, one thing I yeah. would care about as a firm who's interested for certain kinds of adoption, right? Like if I'm going to be building my business on something, I care a lot about the like it's does my competitor effectively control the future of this project? That matters a lot, perhaps yes. even more than everything else in here, right? Like, um, uh, and so I think that there there are these those those maybe other kinds of things that we want to think about as well. Yep. 
so in governance and leadership metrics are there but they are more focused from the dia perspective rather than mm -hmm. this adoption perspective that's where yeah. i like need new metrics this is the comment i have uh, yeah added over there i see i see yeah yeah, yeah. like we need also... new metrics rather than just uh, dia focus because this is taking a different angle rather than looking at it from a dia perspective yeah i'm just thinking of these like examples yeah, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just thinking of these of, of examples of like, you know, there, there are really high profile examples of, uh, you know, very large companies building tools on existing projects where there's like a patent thicket or ownership from some other company. And like, that's, that's like a thing that they you really got to think about yes. when thinking about adopting a project. So, I mean, that's yes. the kind of thing I don't, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I was looking, I don't, I don't see there being a lot of existing metrics that would capture that. And I'm not even sure where to start with that. But, uh, but yeah, I think I, I agree with you that that, that something more in that space would be useful. I was just going to say, I also do remember the subject of DEI coming up quite a bit. So um, companies, there were a few people we talked to that would not even use a, pro a project if mm -hmm. they looked at the community and it looked like it was toxic to them. Mm -hmm. It like the way people yeah. communicate with that with it. I mean, like I was really shocked. But yeah, so usage even not just even like contributing back, but even using a project that is like, bl like blatantly toxic, I think um, companies do look at that. So I don't know where that fits in here, but I would not entirely discount the DEI uh, yep. lens that makes me, here. That's, that makes me more optimistic uh, to hear that, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I was like, yeah, because, and you know what the rationale was, it's open source, there's probably an alternative you know, yeah. that is not that way. So, and they didn't want to give their, um, give any more visibility or give any more, uh, you know, project kudos to a, a project that was really not well run in that way. That's so awesome. I was like, oh, yay. yeah. Yep. So maybe then uh, Elizabeth, you take out those notes and whatever you can find out for this particular model uh, to think and, uh, I'm not sure how much we need to expand it or that's still, I don't know. We, we, we just need to figure this out. Yeah, let me just put an action item for me to do that. Okay. okay. So. Are you adding the action item or should I add it for you? Oh, I'm adding it as a comment, but it didn't okay. show up yet. I'm still typing. Okay. Yeah, yeah no problem. And just to tie this back to the value working group, so just in my mind, so this met this metric model would be around the value that a project would give to an organization or like I'm yes. just trying to figure out where that would okay. Yeah, so organization wanted to pick any open source project and they want to see uh, assess it whether it's usable for them, whether it's good for them to contribute back, whether it's good for them to adopt it. Or even once they have adopted over the period of time, they want to assess whether it's good to continue with it or think of other alternatives. So these are the areas, like even the perspective that I have taken in this uh, model. Okay, so, yep. This is, and the second thing in the agenda was a review of the old matrix, which I think a lot of people have list, but uh, since Padji is not here. Uh, I have not Elizabeth, done mine. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So, yeah, maybe then we can continue in the next meeting. I promise I will do it. <laughs> okay. Yep. That's all for today, I guess. Great. And yeah, any other thing, any other question we get to still 15 minutes. So maybe we'll enjoy those 15 minutes. I will enjoy. I to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so good, much. Good, good seeing you both. Bye, Bye you guys. Bye. Bye.